All right, today we're going to look at um, some additional sketch details, continued from the interior sketch. And we're going to look at this side wall and how the, the roof might uh, meet that. So first thing to do is to sketch in our rough shape. We've got our, our idea about what the thing's going to look like from, from the inside. And uh, we're kind of going to draw a, a roof coming down uh, to, to meet a wall. So very, very rough shape just to establish that we've got a wall and we've got a roof of some description. And in our internal view, we, we mapped in some materials. We kind of shown that it might be a stone that's, that's coursed. Of course, that can be done in a number of ways. It could be uh, applied, it could be tiles, it could be hung on there. Um, and I'm guessing, I didn't draw the outside, but it might be something similar. So that the building, that wall appears like a kind of solid element. So if you're inside the building and outside the building, it would look in the same. And I don't know what's in the middle of it. So what I'm going to do first of all is draw in the uh, finish layers, draw in the internal finish and the external finish, just to give me uh, a kind of starting point. Now, the thicknesses of these things don't really matter just now. When I come to draw these up and uh, actually decide on them, then I can uh, map those in. So I can establish a, a finished floor level and from the previous sketch, we, uh, we kind of knew that we were going to have some sort of screed sitting onto there. So uh, a few wee dots to indicate that that's a concrete screed. And then I have to think about maybe there's something else that some sort of substructure wall that is built down to support these two leaves. And I'm trying to think about this as a, a standard cavity wall construction. And with all cavity walls, we need some way of tying those two leaves together. And that gives a nice cavity. And nowadays we, we've got materials that are suitable for, for fully filling a cavity to, to put uh, insulation in there. So my, my thought process is that there's a there's, there's two leaves of um, uh, stonework or block work with uh, an insulation layer between it. And with all walls that are built in that way, we need some way of establishing a, a DPM and that has a relativity to the outside ground level. We don't want the ground level too close. And the floor then has uh, layers. There's a constructional slab with insulation above it in, the, in our screed. And we can go on and uh, map in some other uh, details. So I'm a little bit of time wasting there, adding a bit of uh, dots to things. That's usually when I'm trying to think of something, I sort of add a bit of a texture to things. Totally unnecessary, but um, I do that. So we've finished our floor build up there. We've kind of got a rough wall, uh, indicate where the where the ground might be in the, the, the um, compacted uh, type one fill or the hardcore, whatever you want to call it. And then we can go up here and have a wee look at what we want the, the kind of junction of the, the roof and the wall to be. So we need some kind of wall plate and usually these rafters of some description are, are kind of checked over the top of that. So there's a little cut out the bottom of the rafters and we'll put in the structure on the sketch we've drawn in purlins, so these are um, timber elements that span from uh, one main rafter to the next, and then they can have a roof deck uh, laid onto them. And because I'm Scottish, I thought we'll do a Scottish slate, which is usually nailed right onto that roof deck, or the sarking as it's called. And when we get to uh, putting insulation in, we can think about, well, maybe it goes between those those purlins. Now, this is probably nowhere near enough space to put insulation in to get a U-value, but it's an indicator of, of the fact that we get to see the rafter and uh, we're kind of looking up at, up at something. We fill in that wee space at the top there. Now, we can't just let the water drip off the, the roof, so we need some way of being able to, to close it off. So we... We need the slates to, to terminate into a, a, a gutter and uh, sort of drip into that. Now, I really should have thought about this before I, I kind of laid everything out. Um, that might have been a good kind of option to, to think of, of how far out the eaves project. So 
draw in a rough gutter, um, but then it leaves me with a gap. So I've no idea how to fill that. And I, I, I could, I suppose, put in uh, a board to the bottom of the gutter and then support that somehow with uh, some some timber packers um, or pack out the bottom of the, the purlins. But, you know, it, it doesn't look good. I've drawn that. I'm not happy with it. Um, so what I usually do is tear off a wee strip of paper and, and just kind of draw over again. It's a sketch, you know, I could, I could sellotape this onto the, the, the drawing afterwards if I want to keep it. Um, so my second idea is to pull the gutter back in line with the, uh, with the stonework. And there are various gutter clips that we can, we can install back onto the top of the rafters or uh, onto the face of the purlins which could hold this in place. And that's probably a slightly neater solution. We're not having a weird board that we're looking at up at as a soffit. And it's maybe neater for a, for a box junction. So the next thing I would do is look at um, maybe alternative floor options. The, the first option was very, was very solid. Um, we had a screed and insulation and a slab. But it might be an idea to think about um, some sort of raised access floor. A lot of buildings have services below the floor, um, electrical services or ventilation routes or, or other services. And we can then lift up one of these panels and be able to get into that. So we could build that off our, uh, off our screed or off our um, main, main slab. And we can also then look at other options for the, the way that the, uh, the eaves are formed. So we could take our rafters down onto the, the wall head again, check them over a the little uh, thing. I, I always call it a bird's mouth. And we could then push that uh, rafter out a little bit and give ourselves more of an eaves. This is a kind of development of the first thing I, I, I said. And then we can use that rafter projecting to um, add some additional framing and give ourselves more of an overhanging uh, eaves if we wanted to. So mapping things like the, the breather membrane and come in with a with a soffit board. So that's probably more robust than the first thing that I covered up. Um, and again we've got our purlins and our, our insulation in, into that point which which isn't shown. And then we we've got our ground line. We can maybe think about we do really want grass or dirt coming right up to the building. Pro probably not. Makes it difficult to cut the, the grass and you'll end up with bits of grass flying up against the stone. So it's nice to have a little margin. Uh, maybe some paving or a path that goes next to it. Um, so that could be slabs onto, uh, usually it's about you know, 30 millimetres uh, of uh, mortar. And then we put some, uh, some nice pebbles next to the building as a margin. And underneath them there's a kind of drainage thing. So none of these details are ever fixed. They're always very fluid things, but they're there to really make you think about the fundamental issues. Okay. Thanks very much for watching.